All right, well, what's up, Velocity? How you guys doing? Hope y'all are doing okay. Welcome to Velocity Live. I think this is, well, like our fourth time doing this. And uh, we're still working some kinks out and still getting some things better for you. Every week we're trying to make it better for you, a better experience for you. But we're so glad you all decided to join us this week. It's Holy Week. Easter is this weekend. We're getting super psyched. Uh, we have a different kind of game we want to try with you all tonight. But in order to do that, I need to get my game girls up here. So Benny, hit my game girl intro music. And then Allie and Katie will take it away. You uh, just take it out of the holder, dork. Okay, so oh, this week we're gonna. Computer. I know. No. This week we're gonna try something different, and we're gonna play a Kahoot. So hopefully we won't have the whole issue of the chat lagging and all that. But <laughs> that was really hard with one hand. Play. Oh, there it goes. All right. So our Kahoot is: Do you know your youth pastor? So it's basically just a bunch of fun trivia about Mark. Yeah, Mark Ortis, everyone. He expects you all to ace it. So, <laughs> let me just do this little bit here. Oh, that's that's actually not what I wanted. Wow, well, we already broke it. Sorry, I almost Dang gave it, them Katie. all the I almost gave them all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So in a second, you'll see a colorful screen, and you're gonna want to type in the numbers after you go to kahoot.it.com. There's my just dot. Kahoot dot just kahoot dot it. it. Enter. Or the app, like it says on the screen. And then put in those numbers and a nickname. Which don't don't put Mark, because I won't know who it is. <laughs> you should put your name your, yeah. so we can give you props for winning if you win. Oh look, I'm playing. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how she's not holding a phone or and she's on the lime street. So I'm on the, the laptop. Give you all a hot minute to do this. If you can't read it, it's one zero oh. three hey, two Weston. seven five one. Except I can read it on my laptop, so you should be able to read Weston it. Weston and Ezra join and Maggie hey. Lumberjack and Jackson. Pretty soon I'm not gonna be able to read them because there's gonna be like twelve of them popping up at once. Uh, Reed says. He can't do the I computer. don't know who Corona I'm is. Sorry. So <laughs> if you win, I'm I'm gonna say the person in second one. Like a native. I Guys, like it. We can't let Corona win. <laughs> it's already making us stay inside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a alumni. alumni. <laughs> All right. I don't know who you are. It's cool. Oh, hello, Tyler. Nice Shroy for you to join go. us. But it's a Shroy dog, so it's not as fun. Well, there's a character limit. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie beat uh, 28. All right. Now, Mike, I'm pretty sure your name did show up. There should be 28 people Nikki Fish. hopping on here to play. I expect you all to enjoy this. It was really fun to make. <laughs> That's an A, not an S. <laughs> Jared doesn't know how to keyboard, everybody. That's a a pinzo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. We got 20 people. There's like eight more of you out there. Just, just do it. It's just seven Next. little numbers. You can do it. It's okay. It says it, Grace you, slash Barbara. Does that mean there's two people or one people? What? Oh, I'm guessing that they're sharing. Yeah. Which is still really cool. You can do Micah that. Micah asked if it's about Mark. Yes. Well, it's called Do You he Know is Your the Youth, youth pastor? pastor? I guess he's <laughs> technically not Micah's youth pastor yet. Yet. But he's your dad, so you should know. <laughs> okay, I see you trying to be funny and not put in coronavirus. Tyler, I appreciate your uh, chat. All right, I'm going to give you all my father. Yes, we know 30, Micah. 30 more seconds. And if you don't do it, the code will still be somewhere on the screen. So it's okay. A Rona. What? Are we ready? 
No one else is adding. I think we're ready. Oh, look, there's another person. All right, I'm going to start it. Three, two, one. All right, question number one. Oh, hold on. It's going to take a second. Sorry. What is Mark's middle name? Good one. Good question. All right. So in red, we have Jared. Blue is Daniel. Yellow is David. And green is Paul. Just in case you can't really see him on your screen. We should have put Mark on there just in case they skipped the reading. Middle name? Let's put Mark. What is Mark's name? <laughs> Mark. <laughs> There's only five answers. Well, it just now popped up on their screen. Oh. That's why we gave Sorry. 90 seconds on there. <laughs> There's a lag on the on the screen, guys, so it's going to come up on your phones before it does. So it's a just wait a minute before you answer because you yeah. might be guessing wrong. <laughs> also, do not spam the chat with answers. I will mute you. It's true. We don't like cheaters. She does, and she does are cool, <laughs> but cheaters. How many people? Is that how many people we had? I think so. I think that's it. Well, it should have ended. It's there's only seconds. Two. Let's just let it run out. All right, we'll All right. let you go. Just in case somebody's being really slow. Yeah, so to. if you didn't make it before I started, they the number's at the bottom. Yeah, and Kylie put the pin in the in the chat, too. So thoughtful, Kylie. Thank you. All right, well, the answer was Daniel, and only if 11 lose, of you got I'm that. I'm very sad. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Hey, a Guess Pinzo. who already took the quiz and is cheating? He cheated. <laughs> don't let him fool you. If he wins, it doesn't count. <laughs> wow, oh, look yeah. at you Way guys. Oh, I want to know who you. alumni is. Oh, yeah, I'm on the board. I don't know. That's a good question. I did tell Way them to, to use their names, but clearly a handful didn't answer. All right. Listen. How many kids does Mark have? One, two, three, or four? It's a really hard question. Micah, I, no this cheating? This is going to stump a lot of people. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> we should put answers that were all wrong. Oh, that would have been, been so mean. Funny. Then they would have been confused. <laughs> they would have been like, uh, what? You should put none for like three of them. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Sorry. Mark yelled at me for hiding. <laughs> You're already like half off the screen. Right? Okay, well, I gotta. <laughs> can't do the computers and, and be on the screen at the same time. It's hard. <laughs> Trying my best, people. It's a Wednesday, Reed, you know. Reed said you have 13 kids, Mark. Wow. I feel like there's more. All the youth group kids are your kids, Mark. <laughs> Mark has 32 <laughs> kids. <laughs> Yikes. It's only 25 in the chat, so. <laughs> oh, 20? One? one? One more? Two more people? Answer? No? Somebody's name in the chat is Ugg. <laughs> Aw, that's sad. <laughs> Ugg. Don't have a sad day. No. Are we going to answer? No. Well, there's a stool over there. You can set it on the stool. <laughs> oh, 17 of you got it right. Two people answered. Well, uh, for two and three. Some of your kids got forgotten. Sorry, you Mark. Just, just win anyhow, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. There's I some tricky ones. Max in there. and Allie are doing pretty good. We'll see. We'll see. I'm doing real good, guys. Okay, well, Allie. Okay, this one. You didn't read the question. Oh. Mark is allergic to red dye 40. Blue is true or red is false. True or false. <laughs> I don't know. It's not Three people answered. How's it going up here? It's really quiet in here. He was at a water polo practice. I, I think that's Jen Hugie's shoulder. Right it is, there, yeah. indeed, <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Jen. Poor Jen. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, look at him popping in there. Come on, people. Yeah. <laughs> 22. There's got to be another person that's just not answering. But so far, I've only... Oh, there's 23. There we go. Is that it? There's got to... Anyone else? No Maggie one? Maggie said that hers ran out of time because it didn't come up for some reason. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Maggie. Not sure what happened there. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip it. All right, the answer was false. Yay. Good job, you guys. Yeah, we just made that question up to trick all of you. I was really specific on it <laughs> just because. <laughs> Hopefully, Mark's not allergic to it, or we all lied to you. <laughs> it's an obscure allergy. I don't know. It's really specific. But people are. <laughs> we just knew Some kids did are it. like allergic to red. red Max. Wow. I don't know how he would be cheating. Maybe he's just Allie, guessing. Did you get it wrong? <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. What are you doing? Okay. Anyways, next. Ooh. How tall is Mark? You gotta use your is thinker. Is he six one, which is the red answer? Five eleven, which is blue. Five eight, which is yellow. Or six feet, which is green. Six inches, actually. Six, six inches. Six inch ribbon, girl. <laughs> I mean, six inch. I, you always talk about how short you are. <laughs> Elf is such a great movie, guys. And if you disagree, six you're wrong. Sorry. Six inches. Whoa, whoa, Jared, this is youth group. Strong language over here. Reed says that you're 7'9". Reed's not playing, so he's, like, answering random answers in the chat. Reed, why are you not playing? <laughs> he said he couldn't get it to work. Man. So There's so a game now, number. Like, you can try again. Try, try it again. Should have played basketball. See, I told Swoosh. you, red dye 40 is a real allergy. Kylie says that her friend Parker is allergic to it. Yeah, it is a real allergy. It's just not very common, and it's super specific, so I thought I would get people. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little mean. It's really sad. I almost put strawberries, but that was just too sad because strawberries are so good. They put gluten. That's really sad, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jared doesn't eat his fruit. Oh. Everybody Reed? shame Jared. He can't watch the stream and play at the same time. It's okay, Reed. Oh, we forgive you. I forgive you. It's all right. All right. Oh, only seven of you got that right. It was pretty spread out. Yeah. Shame to you people who thought he was 5'8". Do you know how short that is? <laughs> <laughs> we gave him an extra half inch because yeah, I... Yeah, <laughs> Jared oh, says Max Lumber is Jackson cheating. Is up there now. And Ezra. Wow. Oh. Micah's on there, too. He cheats, though. What is the last church Mark worked at before Crossroads? Tricky. The first one is Dearborn Free Methodist. Blue is First Presbyterian. Yellow is Cedar Creek. And blue is Bedford Alliance. Green, Green is Green. Bedford Alliance. Wow. I know my colors. <laughs> I, like, read the answer, but it was also looking at the blue rectangle after I... What did I say? Jared, stop. <laughs> You're confusing me now. I'm all confuzzled. Just so you all know, Jared will be missing in the next few live streams because we're going to kick him out. We can. But we will. Kelly Sharpie. She has fixed everything. We have Kelly. Actually, Jim. And Jim. <laughs> I like this picture. I think it's really cute. Mark and Josh. Aww, Josh. There's buddies. What? I'm interested to see what kids are going to answer. Oh, we have 26 answers. Oh, 26. Oh, more people are joining. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. Makes me feel good. <laughs> that people actually like my game. Reed, GameStop is not a church. That's but GameStop answers. is awesome. So... True. I was going to skip it, but there's only five seconds, so we'll wait. Just wait. Oh, 
30, 30 people now. Oh, Look at you guys. Oh, oh, you guys are so smart. I'm so proud nice. you guys knew that. For Shame the on the people that put Cedar Creek, because they're lame. Also, the three of you that <laughs> picked blue are technically not wrong. He did work there, just not right before Crossroads, sorry. Or we were a little Trick mean questions. on that one. Oh. Next one. What sport did Mark play? I could barely spell it when we I was reading it off of the screen. Football, baseball, hockey, or golf? <laughs> or Wrong youth best. <laughs> whatever this game is in the picture that I don't remember the name of. Tetherball. Yeah. He's really good at playing that, see? With, With his, his head. Face. Silly Mark. <laughs> no. They can't hear. It's okay. What are you talking about? I yes. The hat is slipping off a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. It's a quality, yeah, a quality picture. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent approve that, Mark. <laughs> Kylie, velocity starts at seven, not eight. Uh oh. What happened? Okay, I know there's at least eight of you that haven't answered yet, so you guys should answer. Just take a more. while. If you don't know, just just guess. Don't bother trying to look it up. That's just too difficult. And not golf. Like and uh, cheating. Max. <laughs> okay, we'll wait. <laughs> Ten seconds. People are still trickling in. Mark, are you a pro for Fortnite player? No. <laughs> he says he's a noob. Oh, look at that. Nice. Hi. Bunch of people guessed football. Well. Tricked you. Sorry. <laughs> no very like common football. sport, but uh, Mark did not play. <laughs> oh, look at Nikki scooting up there. I see you. Fishy. All right. Micah dropped off the leaderboard. Aw. Which game does Mark like best? Red, Monopoly. Blue, Gaga Ball. Pretty solid one. Yellow, Connect Four. Or green, Connect Pokemon four. Go. I just want to point out how cute this picture is. That's so cute. It's we children. To, we had to make sure we didn't put it before the question of how many kids you had. <laughs> kind of a giveaway. Give it away. Four. I thought about it. <laughs> Oh, it, got, it kicked some people out. Oh, really what question sad. is this? Oh, yeah, you got time, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> it's fine. Below you. I'm sorry that it's kicking people <laughs> out. I don't know why. It started kicking people out? kicked Miller 2 out, which I'm guessing is Landon, but I don't know for sure. Oh, I'm very sorry, but you should definitely rejoin it. The code is 1032751. by the way. 20 seconds. You guys should answer. There's at yeah. least, well, there's a few of you. I can't really tell when it kicks a bunch of people out. It doesn't tell me. All right, well, we got six seconds left. We'll wait. Two, one. Oh, most of who answered? Okay, I I understand Gaga Ball. It's pretty. But that's a <laughs> pretty good game. I'm guessing most of the people who answered Gaga Ball would be junior highers because he plays with them like <laughs> like it's his life. I don't know. <laughs> he tries really hard. <laughs> Gaga Ball is life. <laughs> oh, lumberjack. oh, look at you, little sister. All right, a true or false one. Mark has played in multiple hardcore bands. 50-50 shot. True 50 or false? Just guess. It's 50-50. It's a pretty solid picture, too. Isn't that a good picture? Right there. It's too dark. It's okay. I can see it. <laughs> oh, I was like, why have only three people answered, but... Got 60 seconds, so it's okay. <laughs> Remember, if you guys get kicked out, you should join back in anyway. 
you might not win, but there's there's always hope. Maybe. Tyler says the middle one. There is no yes. middle <laughs> one. Or. Oh. <laughs> True. Or false. Or. Or. <laughs> We're not in a boat. We don't need that. Why did okay. it? Did it run out of time? No, probably everyone answered. Oh, look at that. Wow. Okay. Good job, guys. I'm sorry for the two people that got it wrong. Unless you got it wrong on purpose. Then That's true. I don't feel bad if you okay. got it wrong on purpose. But if you didn't get it wrong on purpose. The alumni says that they graduated with you, Katie. <laughs> they gave us a hint. <laughs> That's the hint? Yep. <laughs> that could be a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, my guess is that it's Amy, but it could be a lot of people. But All why right. wouldn't she just put Amy? That's what she's done before. I don't know. What is Mark's favorite color? Red, blue, yellow, or green? All the colors are the same colors as the answers, so as not to confuse you, because I know there's no school and your brains are turned off. I was being considerate. <laughs> Micah's telling everyone what bands you were in, so they know that you were oh, more than one. Look at him. Two no. people got it wrong. Yeah, most of them got it right. Hey. You quit playing and now I lost. Thanks. <laughs> Unbelievable. So sorry. Is this thing on? All right. Well, on that <laughs> note, um, only 19 of you have answered, so you, you should guess. There's <laughs> only four <laughs> options. You can do it. Ah, huh, look at oh. that. Must have done, it must have took too long. Probably only 20 people now, and I'm very sorry Tally for the 10 wrong, of you that got kicked the out. Yes. <laughs> okay. What do we got here? Ah, two more. What is Mark's hat size? This one. This is the tricky one. <laughs> Okay, well. Five, nine, four, or seven. <laughs> he does have a big head. Also, this picture big. is quality <laughs> as well. That's a really good picture. It's Mark wearing eyeliner. Uh, no. <laughs> no, but I took that one, and then we found it. I really like For it, For all though. the emo kids out there, their eyeliner. Who wear eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ran out of pictures and, and I stalked your Facebook a little bit. <laughs> I was like, well, he got him off Facebook, so I'm going to get him off Facebook. Yes, hats have sizes. In case you didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know Unless that either. Unless you get adjustable <laughs> ones. But... All of my hats say one size fits all, so I just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you guys. Wow, most of them got it right. Seven, nice. That's surprising. I didn't know that answer. <laughs> okay, technically Mark says it's wrong, but to be fair, his wife told me seven or eight, and Mark says it's definitely an eight, so <laughs> my bad. <laughs> all right, last one. <laughs> Question is, Mark is the best. It's not a question, but... True or <laughs> false? <laughs> I thought about making both of the answers right. <laughs> but I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> oh, this one only has 10 seconds. I'm sorry. I did not realize that the time was way shorter hey. on this one. It's a bonus. I'm sorry. <laughs> two, two. All Four right. people answered. That is so not fair. All right, let's see who won besides Jared. Sorry Jared doesn't about count. The last Ooh. One, it, Nikki it placed quit. in third, probably actually second because of yeah, Matt. Jared. <laughs> All right, Jared doesn't count. Skip this. All right, well, yeah, Katie congratulations. Killed the last one, so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I, that was my bad. User technical difficulties. I don't know. I just, good job. She just did it wrong. She failed. All right. Well, good yeah, job, everybody. Good job, uh, glad to know you guys know me. Allie, don't forget to get this TV out of here. You know, I got to. Well, I got to get into it. 
Not here. Um, but anyway, um, it's time to worship. We hope you guys worship with us. We have all of the lyrics in the notes section again, so you guys can see what uh, all the words to the songs we're doing are. Real quick, before we get to that, though, uh, this weekend is Easter. And we've been telling you guys about our Easter services here at Crossroads for a couple weeks now. But we really hope uh, that you guys are going to make part of your Easter uh, welcoming us into your home here at Crossroads. You know, we're going to be worshiping with millions and millions of people across the globe, worshiping our risen Savior. So we hope you guys can hang out with us. You can watch it. There's three opportunities, one on Saturday at 5.30, and then two on Sunday at 9.15 and 11. You know, we really hope you guys hang out with us. It's going to be absolutely incredible. There's going to be some interactive stuff, some selfie challenges, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Uh, so make sure you come hang with us there. All right? So uh, we're going to sing some songs. We decided since we had our drummer Nathan back, uh, that we could have a little fun tonight. So we're going to do a song called Where You Are. This is one of the ones we call a jumpy song. Uh, so feel free to jump around from home with us, you know? There might be some little shouty bits at the end, too. So if you're feeling ambitious, might be. just start screaming and see what your parents say. Because that'll be fun. Yeah, and if you parents watching at home, we Good. worship a little bit different at Velocity. You're about to find out. So uh, we hope you have some fun with it, though. This song's called Where You Are. Let's go. Lived hard on the wire, head in the fire for so long. But you showed me better, a new kind of love that's ever the one I want. I'm lifting you higher, higher. There's nothing that I'd rather do. A sweet elevation, a prayer says, There's no one I love. This before the kind of love that I could not find on my own. I've seen the world, but I had never been so sure that I want you hard. Come on, God, I just wanna be where you are. Your love, like nothing I've seen. My wildest of dreams, so come close. But I've never known better I'm living like this Like can I resist you, Lord? I'm lifting you higher, higher There's nothing that I'd rather do A sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you Come on, I've never knew a love like this before The kind of love that I've seen the world, but I have never been so sure that I want your heart. God, I just wanna be where you are, where you are. Come on, God, I just wanna be where you are, where you are. There's no one I love more than you Come on, I never knew love like this before The kind of love that I could not find on my own I see the world that I have never been so sure I want your heart God, I just want to play where you are Play where you are I just wanna be where you are. Pretty sure we both played the wrong chords during that 
entire breakdown. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But that's okay. Don't focus on that. Uh, it's good to be good to be worshiping again with yeah, the full crew good. here. Feels good. We're gonna sing another song called "The Love Never Fails." We hope you guys sing it out with us. Katie, will you grab me my water? <laughs>
Yeah. Well, hey, we're so glad again you guys uh, decided to hang out with us tonight here at Velocity. I know uh, you guys, I think some of you are on spring break technically. I don't know. This is all just one big spring break, isn't it? Maybe it's summer break now. This might be summer. This Michigan schools are on break now, I think, for the till fall. So I don't even know, bro. You're on summer break. Congratulations. So, uh, but we're, we're really glad you decided to take time out. For those of you who remember what day it is and what time it is uh, to worship with us here at Velocity. We got one last song we want to sing with you tonight. And, uh, man, we just invite you to belt it out, bro. It's called Heroes in Heaven. We know you guys know it pretty well. And uh, so let's sing it together. Here we go. sing this next bit out with us here and we repeat a couple times so you'll get the hang of it and uh, we just want you to sing it out sing with all your hearts with us tonight all right let's sing this together here we go spirit of god fall fresh on us we need your presence your kingdom come your will be done here as in heaven. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, 
the spirit of the lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the lord is here a miracle can happen now for the spirit of the lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of tonight we're thankful for that we're thankful that you're right here with us in the middle of this storm and every storm we face in this life and God tonight as we turn to your word as we turn to your truth we ask that you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to hear from you speak to us tonight God we love you and we pray this in your holy name amen amen hey guys uh, tonight we're starting a brand new series uh, called catching fire and uh, we're just gonna get set up real quick so get yourselves ready Benny hit that music confession to make to you tonight you know I've been saying we're doing this brand new series uh, but actually that's like a tiny bit of a lie uh, this series called catching fire and a couple of you have called me out on it uh, thank you Nina Dominus for calling me out on it uh, but we've actually done this series before and I think most of you who are in high school now you guys were probably in junior high last time we did it but you junior hires this will be new for you but high schoolers the thing the reason we wanted to bring this series back is the last time we did it, we probably got more positive feedback than any series we've ever done here at Velocity before. And I think it's because this topic in particular is one that hits home uh, for a lot of you. You know, um, so we were trying to figure out what, like, what was a good series we could do to bring back to talk about the power of words. And that's what we're talking about tonight. And we just kept coming back to, dude, this Catching Fire series. This, like, it just encapsulates everything we want to tell you guys tonight about the power of words. So yeah, Nina, you right, bro. We're bringing it back again, catching fire. We did this one, man, maybe four or five years ago. So uh, I hope you guys are excited. I hope you all are ready to dive into this and see what God's word has to say about the power of words. But before we jump into that, I wanna talk to you all about fire a little bit. Because if there's one thing I know about high schoolers, man, y'all are just fascinated with fire. And I, I, I don't just say that. Like, I, I have a couple stories that I could share with you about young Mark when he was a bit of a pyromaniac. Like, sure, I had moments where I played with matches and things like that in my bedroom and things. And you guys probably done too. Or you find a lighter or buy a lighter and there's something just so cool about fire. Well, there was this one time when I was in sixth grade. So I was like, what would that be, like 11 years old. Some of you are who are watching tonight. I was at my friend Kevin's house and we were having a sleepover. And uh, we just, we got kind of bored, I guess. I don't know. So we started playing with fire. And we got out his sister's hairspray and we're lighting things on fire. Don't try this at home, by the way. Do not play with fire and hairspray. It's a bad combination. Burn your parents' house down. But we were doing it. And so um, we are having lots of fun and doing different things. And I thought, you know what would be hilarious? I wonder if I could light my foot on fire. This is a true story. I wonder if I could light my foot on fire. So I took hairspray and I doused my foot in hairspray. And then I lit my foot on fire. The problem with this great plan was once I put my foot on the ground to stomp it out, Kevin's parents' carpet caught on fire. And, and so all of a sudden, one of the things I learned really quickly that day is fire spreads fairly quickly. So we were able to like stomp it all out and we kind of covered the burnt area of the carpet with like an end table or something. And I never heard about it again. So Kevin, wherever you are, bro, I love you. I'm sorry I lit your parents' carpet on fire. So fire spreads quickly. The other thing I've learned about fire through my pyromaniac days is fire is powerful. 
So there was another time. I was a little bit older this time, and I had my own house. Before Lisa and I got married, I bought my house, and I lived in it for about a year by myself. And so I'd have friends over. We'd have bonfires and things like that. So there was this one time where the only firewood we had were, like, these big logs. And if y'all have ever tried to light, like, a bonfire before, you know you can't just light big logs. You need, like, an igniter, something in there, whether it's kindling or something like that. So we couldn't get this fire going. So um, my brother-in-law says to me, hey, Mark, um, do you have any gasoline? And I say, yeah, bro, I got, you know, I got gas for my lawnmower and stuff. And he goes, all right, go get the gas can. And I'm like, dude, I, I won't say his name. Dude, I don't think this is a good idea. And he's like, no, 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 Marky, I've done this a million times. And I was like, all right. So I went and got my gas can, and he just starts dousing these logs in gasoline, like pure gasoline, okay? And he's pouring it all over the fire, and I'm like, dude, this is dumb. Like, I'm going to laugh so hard when you try to light this thing. And then he turns to me, and he goes, all right, Marky, go ahead and light it. And I'm like, no, 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 I ain't lighting that, bro. I ain't lighting that. He's like, Mark, go ahead and light the fire. And I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. So I held my lighter down, and the next thing I remember the only thing I can relate it to, I don't know if any of you watch Dragon Ball Z, but there's this move that Goku does called uh, like a solar flare, and he uses it as a distraction. It just blinds his enemies. All, the only thing I can compare what I saw next was a solar flare. Like a, everything just went super bright, like the brightest of flashes on a camera, and then my face felt like it was on fire. So I dove in the grass behind me, and I was just rubbing my face in the grass because it was like cold and wet and stuff, and I'm trying to cool down my face. And I went inside and I saw I had my little beard, you know, and it was all singed all over my beard. My eyebrows were singed. I had a little faux hawk back then. That was singed. Like everything was singed. And I was keeping like frozen products out of my fridge on my face. Because now, even though it wasn't literally on fire, it felt like it was on fire. So I was putting like frozen vegetables and everything. No, I didn't have frozen vegetables. It was probably like pizza rolls and chicken nuggets on my face because those were frozen. That's why I kept in my freezer and my bachelor pad. So the other thing I learned about fire, the first thing I learned was it spreads real quick. I learned that from Kevin's parents' carpet. The second thing I learned is that it's really, really powerful. So the reason we're talking about fire tonight is because I'm convinced that there's uh, something that fire has to do with our words or a similarity between fire and our, wor and our words anyways. See, back then I learned fire was very dangerous. And actually, I looked up a statistic, and the last one I could find was from 2012. And in 2012, I know this was a while ago now, but there were 1.375 million fires in 2012. And these aren't like in the fireplace or in a fire pit, like accidental fires, right? And of all those fires, there were 2,855 deaths in 2012 from accidental fires, 16,500 injuries, and 12.4 billion dollars in property damage. Now, it's kind of crazy, right? The crazy part is that all of these fires, no matter how big or small, they all start with one small match, right? Or one small spark, just like this one here. This one match can be used to cause an awful lot of damage, right? I'm going to light my candle here just to create a little ambiance. Can I create a little ambiance tonight? Thanks, friends. I'll even turn around so you can see it there. See my candle? Yeah, that's how you can tell I'm serious. In a lot of ways, our words can be like a fire. Sometimes we say something small, something that we don't think is a big deal, but then before we know it, just like a little match starts a really big fire, sometimes a little word spoken carelessly or recklessly can cause an awful lot of damage and it can spread really quickly. You guys have probably seen this before, right? Whether you're on the receiving end of it or whether you were the ones who used your words recklessly, I bet you've seen the damage that just a simple few words can cause. I bet you've seen that damage. And now on hearing that, on hearing that our words are as powerful and as reckless and dangerous as fire, there's probably one of two responses some of you have right now. There's probably some of you out there who are thinking, well, man, people just need to suck it up. People just need to not be so sensitive, right? People need to just suck it up and, and just get on with their lives and not worry about it. But, but I bet there's others of you, and even those of you who are saying people shouldn't be so sensitive, I bet if you really thought about it, you would understand and believe that our words have power. Our words have power, an awful lot of power behind them. Maybe you've seen this. Maybe you've seen it when someone did use careless words, whether with you or with, with another student at, you know, church or at school or wherever. Maybe you've seen words spoken carelessly that all of a sudden just blew up like a wildfire, right? And led to all kinds of gossip and all kinds of rumors. And it all started with one person saying one little phrase. 
Or maybe for some of you, you tried out for like a sports team or a drama team or a choir or band or whatever. And maybe at some point or another, the coach or the director or whoever was in charge told you you're just not good enough. And, and you remember those words. They sit kind of strong with you, right? They're kind of hard to shake off because, because words have power. Maybe before you heard your parents talking and, and saying some nasty things to each other. I remember, you know, my parents are awesome. They've been married like a bajillion years. But I can still remember every fight they've had. And I can still remember how, how their words they were throwing back and forth led me to believe as a kid, as a young kid, that they're 100% getting divorced. Either getting divorced or they're going to straight up murder each other in my kitchen right now. You know what I mean? And, and that, th those words, they just, they had power. Maybe you were the one who got hurt. Maybe you were the one who did the hurting. But at some point, I think you've all seen how powerful words can be. I don't think I need to dig too much deeper to prove that point to you. At some point, you've seen how powerful words can be. You said or heard words that didn't seem like a big deal, but eventually they caused a whole lot more damage than you ever thought possible and truly a lot more damage than you ever intended. So have you ever wondered, why is that? Why are words so powerful? Why are words spoken carelessly so damaging? Why, why, are words, why are words powerful enough for us to remember a word spoken to us so many years ago or at some point or another that completely altered the course of our life? Why do words have that power? Well, the Bible talks about that a little bit, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight because here's, here's what I believe. For those of you who call yourselves Christians right now, you know that words are powerful because you read the words or heard the words spoken about who Jesus was at some point or another, and those words change the entire direction of your life. So the question now is, for those of you, especially those of you who call yourselves Christ followers, if words are that powerful, what does that mean or what should it mean to us and how much thought we give the words that we say? So tonight, we're going to be looking at a book of the Bible called James. Now, the interesting thing about James is he was Jesus' brother. Now, you know, you may seem, you may, like, fight with your siblings sometimes and, and figure out, like, try to figure out who your parents love more or say they love more than you. Dude, I guarantee you Jesus' parents love Jesus more than James, okay? None of y'all had it as bad as James. Imagine having Jesus as your brother, you know? Like, hey, James, come home. Yo, Dad, I got a B plus. And yeah, that's great, son. Jesus comes home. Look, Dad, another A, because he's perfect. And then Jesus, he'd be like, oh, Jesus, you are so perfect, son. You, you are the guy. Just imagine. So for a long time, James didn't necessarily follow Jesus, but it was after Jesus' death and resurrection that something clicked inside of James, and he decided that he was going to make the rest of his life talking to people about, yeah, it's one thing to believe in Jesus, but it's a whole nother thing to follow him. So that's what you see the book of James written about. He's pretty blunt. He writes very practically. And I think this is why I love this book so much because a lot of the Bible is open to a lot of interpretation and you kind of got to figure out what God's trying to say through it. But James is just straight up, bro. He's just straight up blunt with you. And he's like that in this passage here. So we're going to be turning to James chapter 3. And if you guys have your Bibles, I really want you to open them tonight. Or whether you use your phone or there's actually a little tab on the page you're watching right now that's a Bible tab. And you can turn to James chapter 3. And, and the reason I want you to do this, especially if you have one of these old school things here, this is called a paper Bible. Uh, they, uh, they still make these, I believe. If you have one of these, I want you to open it to James chapter 3. And I want you to circle, highlight. Do whatever you got to do to remember this passage in the book of James, okay? Are you guys ready? All right, let's go. James chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 5 and 6. It says this. I'll read it off the screen here because I can't see these little words with my candle. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Think about that. It's a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts, meaning it, it says a lot of words. It has a lot of power behind those words, right? James continues, consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. We talked about that, right? Like a small spark or a small match. Something, some small burning ember has to be behind every great fire. It starts with something really small, right? It says the tongue is also a fire, also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Listen, listen. It sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Wow. It's crazy, right? I told you, my boy James, he'd just be slapping it, bro. He'd just be laying it out there, you know? But have you ever thought about that before? 
Have you ever thought about the fact that these bodies Jesus gave us, right? These bodies God gave us can do an awful lot of damage, right? Especially if you got pythons like mine. You see these boys here, you know? These boys do a lot of damage, you know what I mean? And, and we can do a whole lot of damage with our legs, right? Those have a lot of muscle. In fact, if you all heard of Chuck Norris, maybe you heard of Chuck Norris. His legs are actually registered as lethal weapons in the continental United States. Their names are law and order because he can just straight up break people with his roundhouse kicks. If y'all don't know who Chuck Norris is, look him up tonight. You'll learn some things, all right? So you think about all the parts of our body that can do a whole lot of damage, and yet here it is in the Bible. James is writing that our tongue can cause a whole lot more damage than any other part of our body. That's interesting, isn't it? But at the same time, if we think about it, we know this is true. We know that our tongues have a whole lot of power. We know that the words that we say carry a whole lot of weight. Because we remember the things that people say to us, right? James is basically teaching us two things in this small passage here. The first one is that one of the most insignificant body parts can also be the most destructive. And again, I don't have to prove that to you. You all know. You all know when someone spoke a word, whether positive or negative to you at some point or another, you remembered that and it had an impact on your life. Even words you might speak during the day at school or maybe not at school at home, <laughs> you might say something in a moment that you just wish you could take back, but you said it. And even if it's small, you'd never know the damage that's going to cause later on, right? Like some of these wildfires, people didn't intend for a wildfire to start from them having a bonfire or flicking a cigarette, right? They had no idea what could have led after that, the destruction that could have come. And it's the same with our words. Our words, we throw them around so carelessly and recklessly. And sometimes we have no idea the words we might speak to someone, whether positive or negative, how that's going to be keeping them up that night. How that might alter the entire course. It's powerful. And the second thing is this. He, he teaches us that one of the most insignificant body parts can also be the most destructive. And he also teaches us that the tongue is like a fire. The point is, there's a connection between an uncontrolled tongue and uncontrolled fires. An uncontrolled tongue means you're reckless with your words. You don't think things through. You don't consider the consequences. And bro, honestly, I think we all fall into this category. We all have had moments where we've said things so flippantly that we didn't even give it another thought. But if you think about what that might have led that person to that night, or what that might have led that person to thinking about, you know, our words, no matter how small or big we think they are, it doesn't really matter how small they are. Words have the power to set the course of not just your day, but your entire life. And that's actually our big idea I want you guys to remember tonight as we kick off this series is this. Words have the force to set your life on a course. And I know that rhymes. It rhymes intentionally so you won't forget it, okay? Words have the force to set your life on a course. That's how much power words have. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at how that should impact our words and the words we use for good. We're going to look at that next week about how words help heal. And then the week after that, we're going to kind of talk about how we can recover when damaging words have been spoken to us if they are truly as powerful as we say they are. So y'all have probably heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Somebody say amen in the chat. Just go ahead and type amen in the chat there. Good, good, good. But the reality is, I mean, we've experienced the opposite, right? We've experienced the exact opposite, right? Because even if sticks and stones break our bones, bones heal. Bones recover. Bones get better. Injuries get better, right? But words have the power to literally change the direction of our entire lives. There's this quote I want to share with you guys. It says this, Every kid is an artist until someone tells them that they're not. That was spoken by a man named John Lennon, who was a lead singer in a band called The Beatles. If you never heard of The Beatles, you are no longer welcome at Velocity, Okay. Just don't come back. This is important music history. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously. But I'm just kidding. All right. He said that. And think about that. Dude, when I was in high school, actually, when I was in junior high, I thought I was really, really good at baseball. Okay? And I think I was. I actually made the varsity team my freshman year. Only like 15 people tried out because I was at a really small school. But still, I made it. And I remember I went through the tryouts, and I was thinking so highly of myself, bro. I thought I was so good at baseball. And then the coach, I went into his office to hear, you know, if I made the team or not. And he's like, well, where would you rank yourself? And I was like, all right, I'm going to be humble, bro. You know, probably like seventh or eighth of all the guys out there. I'm probably number seven or eight. Definitely top nine. Definitely should be starting. And he was like, well, I'd rank you like 13th or 14th. And, and you know what happened in that moment? And I'm not mad at him. I mean, he's the coach. That was his job. But from that moment on, I started to think maybe I'm not that good at baseball. 
And I can trace it back to when my coach told me I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And I mean, again, I, we got to overcome stuff, right, bro? But for me, that kind of changed my whole view of that sport from then on. And I bet some of you have had moments like that too, whether it was with a sport or maybe it was a teacher talking to you about your grades or talking to you about how good or bad you did on a test. I bet some of you have had those moments where you can look back and see how your life changed as a result of something, said, something someone said to you for the better or the worse. I bet you can do that because I know I can. I can look back at my life and see where there were significant changes in the direction of my life and how that happened from words spoken to me. Because words have the force to set your life on a course. See, let me tell you guys something. The problem isn't social media. It's not the power of social media. Social media has no power other than what people give it, right? The problem isn't that people who say negative things are just mean people. The problem is in the power of our words, the power of the words spoken to us, and the power of the words that we speak out. You know, I don't know if this will shock you as much as it did me, but there was a survey done among teenagers, and that survey said six out of ten teenagers say that they've been involved in either as the bully or as the victim of bullying. And you know how bullying starts, right? It starts with words. And words set lives on a course for both the bully and the one being bullied. Words just don't stick, disappear into thin air. They stick with us, right? They stick around forever. And you may not know this news story, but you may have heard one like it. Back in 2010, there was a female freshman named Phoebe Prince who attended a Massachusetts high school. And she committed suicide because six students were taunting and cyberbullying her. Now listen, listen to that now. It, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that they were beating her up. It wasn't that they were tripping her or pulling her hair or doing anything like that. It's because they were cyberbullying her and taunting her in person. Words, right? Prosecutors charged the six classmates saying their bullying is what led Phoebe to commit suicide. They bullied her, they pushed her, they taunted her for months until she just couldn't take it anymore. It's the power that our words have. Our words have the power to set your life on a course and to set other people's lives on a course as well. That's how much power our words have. So, so what do we do? How do we control our words? How do we be careful that we're speaking life to people and not tearing them down with our words? Because that's almost like second nature for us, right? I remember um, when I was in, let's see, like high school, college, even junior high, there was a group of us that were like really, really good friends. And of that group, there was one guy in the group who was like my brother. And I might have told some of you this story before, but me and him, we hung out like, I swear I'm not exaggerating when I say like five out of seven days a week. Like we were hanging out constantly. We hung out like every single day. When I would start dating a girl, I'd be like, yeah, that's cool, but we're gonna go hang out with my homie here, okay? And that, that, that was me, and I just didn't care because I wanted to be with my boy. That's how it was, okay? Well, we had this moment. We got together with some of our friends and we were playing games and stuff like that. And after that, I didn't hear from this guy for like a week, which was weird, like really weird. And then another week passed and then another, and it was like, the heck is going on? So um, I tried calling him, texting him, he wasn't responding. So I reached out to him via this uh, website that used to exist called MySpace. It was a precursor to Facebook, way before all your time, okay? But it was so much cooler than Facebook, but it's gone now, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I reached out to him on MySpace and I'm like, dude, just meet up with me, let's, let's grab dinner. Uh, so we went to the, the holiest of holy restaurants we could think of, Taco Bell, obviously, and we met there. And when we were sitting there, he started telling me why he hadn't been in contact with me for three weeks. And, and what he told me was, at some point or another, he just got sick of me teasing him. Now, again, when I say he was like a brother to me, I, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, still is. I would do anything for him, okay? And I said, dude, what? I, I, I'd never tease you. I'd never bully you. He's like, yeah, you do. And he's like, and now I have a circle of friends who just constantly build me up and encourage me, and I, I just, I can't handle the negativity of being around you anymore. See, and I didn't mean to hurt him. I would never hurt him. He was my boy, right? But without thinking about it, without being careful about the words I was choosing, I was little by little just chipping away at his self-esteem, who he was, and his character. And it destroyed our relationship. All because, again, I wasn't trying to hurt him. I wasn't trying to tease him. 
I just wasn't being careful with, with the most powerful part of my body, and that was my tongue and my words. So what do we do about it, right? What do we do about the power that our tongue has? I think, you know, I, I can't overemphasize that enough. I hope you guys know this tonight. But the first step and the only step I'll give you between now and next week, two words, be aware. Be aware. Being aware of the words you use. Pay attention to how you speak this week. It'll be easy, right? Because you're just at home. So you're only speaking to maybe siblings, parents, grandparents, whoever you live with. So just keep track. Like, like literally keep track. I challenge you guys this week to grab two cups or two mugs or two bowls in your kitchen, out of the cupboard, whatever, and, and just write down, whenever you speak a positive word, write that down and put it in one cup and mark it positive. And whenever you speak a negative word, write that down and put it in the negative cup. And just keep track. Keep track of how you use your words. And then at the end of the week, look back. I mean, you could even look back right now on the last week, right? And the way you use your words. Let me tell you guys, if you're snarky or like mean to your parents, let me tell you as a parent, it hurts. And your parents may play it off like they don't think or they don't care, but it cuts deep, bro, <laughs> you know? So keep track, pay attention. Because if our words are that powerful, and we're gonna talk about again over the next week, how our words can literally bring life, and then the week after that, how words can literally destroy. We'll get into that too. But if words do have that much power, then don't you think, especially for those of us who are charged, what is Christians, what is the only charge Jesus gave us? Go out and love God and love people. And what's one of the best ways we have to love people? By building them up with our words, by encouraging them, by speaking life into them. So friends, if our words are absolutely that powerful, which I believe they are, and I believe you believe they are too, then it's worth being aware of the words we're choosing and how we're choosing to use those words. Listen, guys, this weekend is Easter, and you may be thinking, like, what does this message have to do with Easter? Why are we doing this now? But I would tell you this message has everything to do with Easter because when Jesus Christ, when he went up on that cross and died in our place, and then three days later when he was resurrected, when he rose from the dead, which that's what Easter is, that's what we're celebrating this weekend. When he did that, he overcame sin. He conquered sin once and for all. He overcame death. He overcame shame and guilt. He overcame all of those things so that we could be free to live our lives for him, to love others, to show others how much he loves them by the way we love them. And Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross in vain. He didn't raise from the dead in vain. He did that so that we could take that love he showed us, that ultimate sacrifice, and go out and show it to other people. And it starts and ends with the way we use our words the way we use our words. See, some of you tonight, you may not believe that's what Jesus did on that cross had any, anything to do with your life. Or maybe this is the first time some of you did hear that. And all you have to do to embrace that freedom that Jesus Christ earned for you, that he got for you when he died and resurrected from that cross, all you have to do is believe and accept it and pray something like, Jesus, come into my heart and purify me and bring me that freedom that you won for me on that cross, that you won for me at Calvary. And Jesus will come into your heart and make you new. He'll take off the shackles of shame and guilt so that you can be free to love God and to love others. Guys, we can't miss this. And I believe that's why, you know, of all the things the Bible says about love, about serving, there's this small passage here included from the book of James. And I believe the reason that God kept that part involved is because he needed us to hear this because we need, to, as Christians, we can't be bullying people. We can't be tearing people down because that's not what Jesus died for. He died so that we could go out and love people. And a great way to do that is by speaking life to them with our words, with the most powerful, most powerful tool we have, part of our body that we have, and it's right here inside of our mouths. Let me pray for you guys. God, I know that, um, you know, we're in the midst of quarantine and everything, and it's, it's a funny time to talk about our words, but, but it's also a great time to put into practice and start being aware of how we use our words whether it's through texting, whether it's on Snapchat or TikTok or whatever, it's a great time for us to start being aware of how we use our words because when you went and died on that cross for our sins, and when you raised from the dead three days later, you overcame the grips on our life of sin. You overcame the shackles on our lives so that we could be victorious, so that we could be free to go out and love people the way you love people. So God, help us not to miss this. Help us not to be careless with our words 
or be reckless with our words, because if we think back, we know the power words have. So help us never to be reckless with them, but to start to just be aware of the words we use. Are we bringing life or are we bringing destruction? We're thankful for what you did on that cross for us, God. And I pray if there is anyone watching tonight that just tuned in or clicked the link or something like that, found us some way or another that doesn't know you, that God, that you would reveal yourself to them tonight, that they, they would know that they can have freedom through the sacrifice that you made by sending your son Jesus to die for our sins and to be resurrected to conquer death and sin and evil. And all they have to do to accept you as their savior is pray something like, God, come into my heart. Make me clean, make me new. I believe in what Jesus did for me on that cross. And I give my life to you. God, I'm thankful for who you are. I'm thankful for the way you love us, the reckless way you love us. Help us to go out and never use the strongest part of our body to tear people down, but help us to go out and use our words to show other people exactly how much they are loved by you and by us. We love you, God, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in with us, man. I'm so glad you could come hang out with us. I know um, you guys are out of your schedule and out of a rhythm with the things that you do every single week anymore, uh, but I want to encourage you to keep coming back with us here at Velocity because this series, I believe, has the power. If it changes the hearts of however many kids are in our youth group and they can start being aware of their words, man, it's going to change the area. It's going to change the neighborhood. It's going to change the world. So don't miss it. Keep coming back. Keep hanging out with us every single Wednesday. And make sure you get your families to sit down this weekend and experience Easter here at Crossroads. Man, you'll be so glad you did. It's going to bring you life, bro. Don't miss it. 5.30 on Saturday, 9, 15, 11. We hope to see you guys there, all right? Have a great week. We'll keep the chat open for a few minutes here so you guys can say your goodbyes. I love you guys. I miss you guys. And I can't wait to see your faces in person. But until then, we'll see you next week right here at Velocity Live. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you. Away, but I'm warning you, babe. Send a green light, no serenade. It's a red flag.